Today we're talking conveyor belts. Just a quick kind of tutorial. I'm kind of teaching myself as I go, in all honesty. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And due to um, what can only be described as an incident, my silage clamp is full of grass. Not quite sure why, I'm still trying to figure that out. The Chrome Big X there isn't doing what it should be. Anyway, that said, these are interesting because I think to get the scripts to work, the conveyor belts, they have to treat them as a vehicle. So you enter them. So enter the first one. This is the Lizard S710. This conveyor belt will take stuff, whatever it is, crops from the ground up to the next conveyor belt because it's not high enough to go up to a trailer but it will take it off the ground now if i fold the belt that lifts that up and if i press my right one shoulder button i start the engine that just means you can actually drive it weirdly enough for positioning so i'm going to position this one into the grass which I left there so that's in position that can't go up or down or anything else so jump out of that one that's positioned so all that will do is take it from the ground up the conveyor belt onto the next one now we've got two other ones here um, interestingly enough this one here the Grim TC 8016 this is basically an extension belt um, it can raise and lower, I'll do the same. Jump in, start the engine. Now, if we go around to the side here, we can swing it side to side, which actually does make it quite a handy bit of kit. Um, which will go all the way around if you need it to. Try and get that into the right position. And you can, with the same controller, up and down, if you see the, the back, just get the better angle. It will raise up and down. Problem is with the dual shot controller, because it's all on the right one, the mushroom, while you're trying to go up and down, it does tend to swing side to side as well. So that is an extension belt. You can open that right out. Same thing again with the engine on, you can drive it. and you can position it wherever you need to which makes it quite a handy piece of equipment so pop that, turn off the engine and jump out which brings us on to the last one I'm going to look at very very quickly this is going to be a relatively short video, it doesn't need to be particularly long um, they're quite self-explanatory, self it is self-explanatory so the Grimm SL8022 Quantum this is a bigger brute, um, but I do like this one. Uh, do the same thing, enter it, start the engine. With the engine started, we can do the same thing. We can drive it. Now, what you can also do is, now it says up in the top left hand, if it's triangle, change angle. Well, I've pressed that repeatedly and it goes up to 50 and then back to five degrees again and nothing happened. But you can raise it right up, whatever height you need it for, for whatever trailer you're working out of, and we're gonna be using the Joskin over there. And if I go on the right shoulder button, we can extend it even further, so we go because it's a big, it's trying to find a good angle on it. Uh, there we go. Trees in the way, really. We can extend it even further if we want to. So it makes it a very versatile piece of equipment. I'm going to put that out quite a way, I think. Maybe there. Lower it down a little bit. Don't want it too high above the trailer, it'd be ridiculous. Okay. Now drive it into position. want to get it directly underneath the other belt if I can. Like 
So now, right, that's engine started. If I jump back into this one, oh, well, that one says that started as well. Why is that moving? Okay, that's weird. That should not be going anywhere. Okay, I've got them driving all over the place on their own. Maybe I need to stop the engine, that's probably why. Stop the engine, jump out. Enter. Stop engine. Now, I'm assuming the engine stopped, they will still convey. <sighs> Moment of truth then is to see if they will convey. Let's start this up. Now, um, there is a longer story to this, but I will bank, I'll get on to that later today. So if I drive this underneath, it should... Should have, tipped, should have raised it a bit higher, not quite high enough. There you go, so the conveyor belts are now working. This one is taking it from the pile, and it, you can probably do with edging it up a bit further anyway. It's taking it from the pile, up that conveyor belt, which takes it off the ground, drops onto the next one, which takes it all up here. That could do have been positioned a little bit better, maybe. Up and into the trailer, which is jolly handy. And obviously you can position this one and this one any direction you want. That's got the much longer extendable boom. But obviously this one here, because this one can spin side to side, it kind of, if you swung it all the way around, it would double the, uh, the length of it. Giving you quite a bit of versatility. There we go. So that pouring in. That will keep pouring until the trailer fills up and then it kind of automatically shuts off. Just jump in that actually. And raise up a little bit. There we go. Now as you can see, the only kind of unrealistic part of this is, because it's in the um, silage clamp, it's continuing to take it from here. As you can see this disappearing gradually. I might stop now. Right, that could be the trailer's full. We'll just have a quick check. No, it will need moving then. Okay. So what I can do is probably move it around to the other end. Um, that'll be a lot easier. Or use the extendable boom and push it out even further. So what I'm going to do... Again, if I'm rambling, I do apologise. I'm, I'm kind of learning as I go. It's a tutorial in so much as if you haven't bought them or used them yet, it's interesting to see what they can do. I'm quite sure why it hasn't taken this bit here. Let's jump in that. Start the engine and move that forward. I hope I actually moved it forward and not the wrong way. Stop the engine. Jump out. Jump into this one. Start the engine. Ah, oh, there we go. Hopefully once it gets onto there... It will feed that belt. Apparently not. Okay, so that's taking everything that was off the ground pretty much it's filled up both belts and stopped because either the belts are full there's nothing underneath the conveyor belt to work with jump out move this one then well, so this is probably a little bit unrealistic and it is a little bit but so it's right up into here Well, so it will let me. I'll probably actually, if I do it just about there, then I won't miss this stuff at the front. And stop engine. Jump out. And right, what I'm thinking then 
is jump in this one start the engine and move this one out of the way <coughs> just so I can use the other one Right, jump out of that. Jump into this one. Start the engine. This is interesting. This is only rotated um, to 90 degrees, and I'm starting to panic. But then I found this. You can actually slide it right the way along its length. When I get to that end, I can then rotate it around again, which does give you the extension that you need. Well, that's brilliant. Okay, so let's drive this the right way. Yes, that was the worst driving you're ever going to see. I'm going to just swing in a better angle here. Probably would have been easier if I'd actually moved it using the tractor first. But you can do it without the tractor. course it would catch on there wouldn't it oh come on yes some of the worst driving you're ever going to see straighten up a little bit now like I say this is now filling up that belt and stopping now it's full Oh dear, it's a palaver, isn't it? Um, right. Stop the engine on that. Jump out. So, I've now got uh, this one here. Dropping onto this one here. Which is a bit extended. Which drops onto the second part. And goes to here. Oh, wow. Now jump into this one. Start the engine. And position this one. Like I say, this would have been a lot simpler had I um, stop engine. Had I gone from the other end, <laughs> it would have been a lot easier. Right, let's see if this has worked. Um, all right, let's try this back under. If I started the tractor's engine, wouldn't it? That would be more helpful. And there we go. It is working. How bizarre. Okay. Turn the engine off. So. Wow. Uh, conveyor belts. Impressive, <laughs> impressive stuff. This is a long setup. Um, yeah, this is yeah, probably a little bit ridiculous. Anyway, so. I can turn that off now. Um, yes, it's taking from here. <laughs> a little bit unrealistically. We'll have to keep moving it. Um, up this one all the way along this one which has been extended the animations are good I have to say it's quite impressive hmm like that all the way along oh I'm to jump on there and go up with it all onto this one again cool animations drop onto there follow this one all the way to the top oh let's go with it why not all the way to the top and pouring out into here the health and safety bods will be going mad but that's really good um it's one of those weird things that i was saying to moving seal who does um multiplayers with me one thing i wanted from watching dagawin uh on naveswell farm and he had a blue conveyor belt for doing silage 
I said straight away, I really, really, really hope there are conveyor belts on Farming Simulator 17 because they make life so much easier for loading large quantities of whatever it is into trailers. And because of the new feature on Farming Simulator 17 that you can actually unload anything anywhere, this makes reloading stuff so much easier. Right. Before I go, wrong menu. Belt systems. The one I haven't talked about is this one here, the Grim RH2460. This one, as it says at the bottom, loading this machine with potatoes or sugar beet will create nicely packed pallets you can sell. Alternatively, it can load conveyor belts with sugar beet or potatoes. That one is for sugar beet or potatoes only. It's a kind of start one, you load into it, and then you can attach a conveyor on the other end, or it will make pallets to load up. I haven't bought one of those yet because I didn't need it. Um, uh, but when I do, I'm sure I will show you. But that is conveyor belts. I will just jump into this starter up. That's an unusual snaking system. Anyway, I'm not quite full. Uh, this takes 47,000. Um, I'm going to have to have a bit, of a, <laughs> a bit more of a fiddle around with the conveyor belts. Um, probably move them and put them in from the other end. Um, I hope this tutorial, not tutorial, um, follow along and learn at the same time with Mr. CDP um, has been helpful. If it has, great, give us a like. Um, if you don't subscribe, please do. Uh, I have my Let's Play and I also have FS15 Let's Plays on my YouTube channel please do um leave a comment if you want to leave a comment if there's something i've missed something i'm not doing properly if i made an absolute hash of it which i'm i'm sure i probably all did um but anyway conveyor belts kind of done <laughs>